Hello my loves, I hope you're doing all kinds of well. It's time for take two of this chaos. So this is another Wheel Chooses prompts that then prompt me to get books. So Wheel Chooses My Book Haul slash June TBR. I really need to find a better title for these. But if you saw my last version of this, you know how this works. In this video I use my Wheel of TBR to give me book buying prompts rather than reading prompts, but ultimately these will be read. So still reading prompts? Question mark? Then I venture out into Edinburgh's fantastic bookshops and I try and find books that fit those prompts. Last time I didn't do a great job because I did go over budget. I bought more books than I was supposed to in that video. And also I had to buy a couple of them online when I got back because I flopped and couldn't find certain books to fit certain prompts. Anyway, this one I think I've done a better job with, but y'all can be the judge of that. I've had the book buying itch for a while, so I was very eager to do this. I'll also be doing a reading vlog for these like I did with the last ones in a more timely manner this time though, as I am planning on reading all of the books in this video in June. And I also hit up a few different bookshops than I did in the last video. So let me take you back to the actual spinning of the wheel and the book shopping. But before we go ahead and get into it, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Book of the month for sponsoring today's video. Book of the month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers that's based in the US but also now ships to Canada. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors to the readers who will love those books. Every month their team vets hundreds of new titles to provide a curated list of new and sometimes early releases for you to choose from. Meaning you can spend more time reading and less time researching what new books you want to read. They are giving you a list of different titles, usually from a few different genres, which I personally love. <laughs> and what's also great is that if there's any month in particular where the list, nothing on there takes you fancy, you can skip that month and you won't be charged for it. So it's time for me to let you know what books I selected this month. It was really tricky to choose, but I got a thriller. I always get a thriller, it feels like. They always have such juicy sounding thrillers as an option. This one is She Started It by Sean Gilbert. And it's about four best friends who have drifted apart over the years, but then a a former friend from years ago who they haven't spoken to invites them to an extravagant bachelorette party in the Bahamas but of course old secrets come out as here the women quickly discover they've underestimated the bride. As their darkest secrets are revealed, the tropical adventure morphs into a terrifying nightmare. Endlessly twisty, sharply observant, and deliciously catty, she started it is sure to shock readers until the very end. I am so hyped. I feel like this one's gonna be right up my street. And then also, I chose The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer, which is a book about books, kind of, which I love. This one's about a reclusive, mega best-selling author who quit writing under mysterious circumstances, but suddenly he resurfaces with a brand new book and a one-of-a-kind competition, offering a prize that will change the winner's life. Giving me a little bit of the writing retreat vibes, maybe not as dark, but either way, this one sounds really juicy too. So these two, I really wanna read in June. <laughs> also, I just wanted to note that they always send a bookmark and this one says, respectfully, leave me alone. <laughs> which we love that. So if either of these take your fancy or you wanna check out the rest of the books on June's curated list, you can head over to bookofthemonth.com, which I will link, of course, in the description of the video. Book of the Month generally has the best price as well for brand new release hardback fiction. And you can get your first book for only 9.99 by using the code SPLASH, which I will link down below for you as well if you'd like to check out Book of the Month for yourself. So thank you so much again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video and for continuing to support the channel. We love them. And now, without further ado, let's get to the spinning. I'm hyped, folks. I've got my jacket on. I'm ready to go. So let's do this. Let's spin. Same rules apply as in the last video. So this is the video where I want the wheel to land on the same colour more than once. But I am going to spin five times. Five books seems reasonable. If we go over that, we go over that. The last time I did this was with the dodgy wheel. So I think that's why I ended up with having to buy nine books, which I went over as well. I think I bought 11. So I may not be prompted to buy as many this time around, but that's fine, that's fine. That's probably a good thing. Oh, also, I'm missing a prompt, so I just wrote it. <laughs> because I wanna go book shopping, I have a mighty need. The last prompt that came up on the last video was random emoji generator, so I'm gonna switch that one out. And I'm gonna switch it for this one okay new series that's a good one i think last time around i didn't have much of a strategy i'm hoping to have a better strategy this time however it depends on what prompts come up huh so let's see what the first one will be spin number one <laughs> A 
random number generator. I think I'll need to do that in the shop because it will depend on how many books are on the shelf. Also, if the number ends up on a book I already own, I'm just gonna have to keep doing it. This one might be tricky and it's very specific. It's that one particular book. So this is a prompt I might prioritize when out in the bookshops. And switching that prompt out, we'll go for this one, which is partner pick. I haven't made a bunch of new prompts for this. So I'm just gonna reuse the ones I already have and had from that last video up until I need to create new ones. You know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge if we get there. <laughs> this prompt came up last time and Massey did me dirty. He picked the one book out of the three that I wasn't that bothered about. <laughs> so hopefully if it comes up, he'll have a better time of it this time. Okay, spin number two. <laughs> generator we can do that one now okay so i'll find a random letter generator online okay it comes up as an s immediately but we're gonna randomize let's see a c yay for cody okay i could make this specific to the author's last name beginning with the c but i think i'm gonna make it so that c can be either the first initial of their first name or last name because that gives me more options i could also make it so that the letter you know it's the title now I'm going to stick with author. I'm going to stick with author name for this. I only have three prompts, but we're going to switch it out for one of them. Let's go for this one. Random item generator, which could be messy. Oh, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video as well, the last wheel only had 12 sections, 12 colours. This has 14. So I did add on new release and colour generator because those are the prompts I wanted to add on. It's my game, it's my rules. Bin number three. <laughs> random word generator they're all just random oh my god the chaos okay random word generator let's go okay so the random word to begin with is us i'm gonna randomize warn what what kind of word is warn i'm gonna search goodreads right now to see if there's any books have one in the title. I might have to re-randomize, re guys, because that, that's intense. Oh, there's like, you've been warned. Okay, trigger warning. There's a few, but I don't feel like there's going to be enough and any that I actually want to read. And I'm not just going out here buying things for the hell of it. Like, I want to pick books that I actually genuinely want to read. Yeah, mm, I'm going to randomize again. It's my game, my rules. <laughs> Generate again. Have, have. We can work with have. We can work with have, I think. This might be doable. I may fail at this, but I'm going with have. This is gonna be an interesting scavenger around <laughs> bookshops. And switching random word generator for this one. Goodreads Choice Awards. There's probably some still on that list that I wanna read. And spin number four. <laughs> Almost orange again. But gold, cover by, cover by, we can work with. <laughs> and switching out cover by for the last prompt that wasn't already on here, which is friend's least favorite of 2022. <laughs> Possibly the last spin, but I might just do one more for good luck because my game, my rules. But um, here we go. Bye. <laughs> So I don't need to add in an extra one for luck. It's established that I'll be doing that anyway, because we landed on that colour before. And it's partner pick. He better choose right this time. <laughs> and I've run out of prompts, but if partner pick comes up again, I'm gonna have my Patreon folk maybe choose the prompt for me. <laughs> because I feel like me trying to decide what to add there instead would take me a long time. And I really wanna go book shopping. I wanna go. Okay, so spin number six. New release! We can work with that. So six books. I have to buy six books. I'm gonna try not to buy more than six books. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> Those are all the spins, so six spins. So not nine, but I mean six is a decent number. And the prompts we ended up with, so... <laughs> We got random number generator, which I'll do in the store, I think. I'll screen record my phone and show you that at the time. We then had random letter generator, which was C. So I need to find a book whose author's name, first or last name, begins with a C. Random word generator, we have have, which is probably gonna be a bit difficult, I imagine. 
I'm probably gonna fail this one, but I'll try my best. We then have cover by, which that's an easy one, followed by partner pick. I'm probably gonna do the same thing again where I pick a few books for him to choose from. And then we've got new release, which is also an easy one. <laughs> I feel like I wanna do one more spin. I'm just gonna assume you all are egging me on right now watching this. I'm gonna do another spin, but I'm doing it for you, specifically for you. <laughs> again, not switching out the prompt though, because I don't have any prompts. If another one comes up that I've already had, I'll just get a patron to decide what the prompt will be because um, they probably have better ideas than I do. So, <laughs> spin number seven and the last one. Watch it come up on a colour that I've already had and then it'll have to be eight. I'm getting a little bit carried away with myself here, aren't I? But um, yeah, let's just do one more, one more, spin seven. <laughs> <laughs> That was a pathetic spin, but yay for staff pick. So I'm gonna read the staff recommendations that are up on the shelves near the books and choose a book based on those. Exciting. Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna stop now, I need to stop. But um, I'm gonna put my shoes on. Let's go book shopping. Do I have a strategy? Hmm. I think I'm gonna hit up Waterstones first because that has the largest selection. Then try a secondhand bookstore. Then maybe toppings because also big selection of books. But yes. Let's go book shopping! And here I go, off on my excursion, with my bag, to put my books in, on the bus. Yeah, I got the bus into town. And that strategy that I had, that, I didn't do that, because <laughs> I ended up in Old Town. So I went to Blackwell's first, which is apparently the oldest bookshop in Edinburgh. But we had a nice selection of books in here. They had a whole display for Yellow Face, which made me very happy. If you haven't read this book yet, please do. Uh, checked out the new crime and thrillers because I love a thriller, and the new sci-fi fantasy and horror. I had most of these, actually. <laughs> so then I popped downstairs to the bigger horror section. I was clearly feeling some kind of way this day, and the horror books were calling to me, or what can I say? And after I left Blackwell's, I made my way down Victoria Street, got a few clips of this, because it's a very pretty street with all the coloured buildings and made my way past the back of the castle, as you do. <laughs> Got distracted by cats. This is the Cat Cafe in Edinburgh. Look at all the fluffs just hanging out in the windows, getting some sun, love that. And then I went to Armchair Books. I love this bookshop. I always manage to find Robin Hobbs books here. There's always a good selection of um, fantasy books in here. And it's an absolute maze and definitely a bookshop I would say you need to hit up if you do come to Edinburgh at any point. I do try to not spend too long in this shop though because it is so cramped. I know it can only fit like a few people in it at a time. But there is like a antique, like rare section of the store as well which is always fun to peruse. I then made my way back round the back of the castle onto Princess Street till I reached Waterstones, which was meant to be my first point of call, but wasn't. And apparently I didn't film much in Waterstones, but here's me with my bag. I now headed off to Starbucks because I was sweating balls. <laughs> so I got myself a refreshing peach iced tea and then Toppings was my last bookshop to visit that day and this is also a great shop. Lots of little rooms in here so it is a little bit like a maze, a bit like armchair books, um, but the ladders are always fun. <laughs> Though I'm yet to be brave enough to actually climb the ladder in the shop, I just feel like I would be that person that would fall, you know? I would be a danger to myself and others. But of course I had to go and have a gander around the sci-fi and fantasy section and it was a bit stuffy in here so I quickly grabbed the last books that I needed to to fulfill my prompts, tried my best to not get distracted by other things that didn't fulfill the prompts and that was my little book trip around Edinburgh. Okay, so how did I do? <laughs> Let's get into the actual book haul of it all. Things I did right this time was venturing into town on a weekday that wasn't super busy. Things I did wrong, I dressed all in black, didn't I? And I had a black, like, clever blazer on and apparently summer has arrived in Scotland, so that was a mistake. But we'll go in order of what bookshops I went into and what I purchased from each one, as we did in the previous video, and then I'll let you know what prompts I'm hoping everything's gonna fulfill. <laughs> the first bookshop I went into was Blackwell's and I purchased a couple of books from there. Firstly, I saw this and I wanted to try it for a while. It's Grady Hendrix's We Sold Our Souls. Now I really like Grady Hendrix. I like his wacky, chaotic plot points that often come up in his books. His books are a bit hit or miss though. There's some that I really loved and some that I didn't like so much. But I saw this and it has black sprayed edges and it also has all this like, what I'm assuming is like demonic text <laughs> on the naked hardback. And I thought, yep, that's mine. The tagline for this is only a girl with a guitar can save us all. As a former, well not former, as an emo kid, 
I uh, think I'm really gonna like this. <laughs> Every morning a girl called Chris wakes up in hell. In the 1990s she was lead guitarist of Dirtwerk, a heavy metal band on the brink of breakout success, until the lead singer Terry embarked on a solo career and rocketed to stardom, leaving his bandmates to rot in obscurity. One day everything changes though as a shocking act of violence turns her life upside down and she begins to suspect that Terry sabotaged more than just the band. She hits the road hoping to reunite the band uh, and confront the man who ruined her life. A journey will take her from the Pennsylvania Rust Belt to a celebrity rehab center to a satanic musical festival. We sold ourselves as an epic journey into the heart of a conspiracy crazed, pill popping, paranoid country that seems to have lost its very soul. I, I mean say less. <laughs> so that's the first book that I ended up purchasing. Secondly, this one I've wanted to try for a little while. It's The Witch in the Well by Camilla Bruce because I read You Let Me In by this author and really enjoyed it. It's my kind of weird. That one it was very earthy. <laughs> they were involved it was strange and wonderful but also had this like dark undertone to it so i'm hoping for similar things with this one once upon a time the townspeople of f just known as f apparently this town it did something wicked local school teacher catherine has made writing the definitive account of what happened when ilsbeth clark drowned in the well her life's work some don't want the past raked up but catherine is determined to shine a light upon the shameful event eleanor is a successful author who's earned a certain celebrity now in search of a new subject she announces her intention to write a book about the long dead woman eleanor has everything catherine has not these two are friends as well childhood friends so messy friendship drama love that but no one seems to care that elena's book or eleanor's book will be pure speculation tainting ilsbeth memory catherine is left with no option but to blunt her rival's pen before summer is over one woman will be dead and the other accused of murder but is she guilty or are there other forces at work and who was ilsbeth clark really was she innocent or was she witch or something else entirely so we have childhood friends both wanting to write the same story essentially and I'm hoping it gets real messy. <laughs> Again, this one sounds like it's gonna be right up my street. So kind of spooky yuki ones <laughs> I picked up with to begin with. Next up, I went to Armchair Books, which I love. I love this bookshop so much. It's cramped and cozy in the best way. Books up to the ceiling, books everywhere, y'all saw. And I didn't expect to pick this up, but the cover definitely called to me. And I've been wanting to read more Agatha Christie. I've only read a few, and those are like the most popular ones. And I found this little crime collection, which is, I just love this like 70s vibe. Um, it does say on the inside that it was published in June 1970, I believe. It very much fits that era with the design of it. And also strangely, it has sprayed edges, but just on the top edge which I thought was a strange choice, but also it's kind of charming. Um, but this collection consists of Perilla End House, The Body in the Library, and Hercule Poirot's Christmas. Now, the one I'm most intrigued by is The Body in the Library, because I believe Gavin recently read that. And that one is a Mrs. Marple story, I believe. So I think if, you know, when I come to do the reading vlog, I'll maybe just read The Body in the Library out of this, but it's nice to have, you know, a few in one. Also, they had a few different stories in this collection available, but this is the one with the pipe on the cover that got my attention so I picked up that in armchair books. I then popped into Waterstones because of course I did. <laughs> that bag is empty I kept it as a prop yep. <laughs> this is where I started to get a little bit flustered because I still hadn't done the like random prompts really. First off I thought I'd do partner pick. Now there was a couple of graphic novels or manga um, that I really wanted and have wanted for a while and I took a picture of both of them. I only gave Massey the option between the two this time because last time I gave him an option of three books and he picked the one book out of the three that I wasn't that bothered about so I thought I'd narrow it down for him <laughs> I just gave him the option of two and this is how that exchange went. <laughs> and he picked The Girl From The Other Side um, little collection, uh, Deluxe Edition number one. This spine is so cool by the way. <laughs> and this contains the first three volumes of this manga he said he picked this one because it looked darker because there was a demon serving a little girl a cup of tea and I laughed out loud because this isn't that dark. Or at least the first one was really wholesome and I've been wanting to continue for a while so I'm so glad I picked this up. And this edition is just absolutely beautiful with the foiling and I'm obsessed with the spine as I mentioned. Once upon a time in a land far away there are two kingdoms. The outside where twisted beasts roam that can curse with a touch and the inside where humans live in safety and peace. The girl and the beast should have never met but when they do a quiet fairy tale begins the first one was so cute <laughs> this is a story of two people one human one inhuman who linger in the hazy twilight that separates night from day oh it says it's inspired an animated short film i'll have to check that out as well the art style is also absolutely beautiful i should probably actually take the plastic off of this and show you oh it feels really good as well it's one of those like 
matte feeling textured materials. Oh, end papers. Cute. Oh, we have some beginning pages that are more in colour because the rest of it is in black and white, but there's some coloured images there. Just absolutely gorgeous, this art style. So it's fair to say I was very pleased that Matthew picked this one, and when I do come to read it, I will just reread volume one, read the whole thing. So that was one of the prompts definitely chosen. That was part of pick. And next up, I decided to do the random number generator, which was a bit difficult. I didn't want to choose like the fantasy section because it was very large. So I went to the horror section, and you can see in this footage here, I was guesstimating that these shelves had about a hundred books on. But whilst in the shop, I recorded my screen here and did the random number generator thing between one and a hundred and I think I got like was it 73 or 75 or something something in the 70s so I let out an exasperated sigh of course in the shop and then I got to counting and that book ended up being Daphne by Josh Malaman which I'm really chuffed about actually I'm very pleased because I've read Josh Malaman before I've read a couple of his books and really enjoyed them obviously Bird Box being the most well-known one this one is about a basketball team a girls basketball team and we're following a girl called Kit and it's her last summer with her high school basketball team before college and the rest of her life begins. But the night before the big game, her teammate tells her a ghost story about a girl from their school named Daphne. Some say she was murdered, others say that she died by her own hand, but some say that Daphne was or is a murderer herself and that she appears anytime someone thinks about her to kill again. And as her teammates vanish one by one, Kit must find the truth behind the legend or the summer of a lifetime will become the last summer of her life. So is there really a ghost kicking about killing her teammates? I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm very pleased that this one ended up being the winner of the number generator one because honestly that could have been anything but yay for another prompt fulfilled with this one so at this point i'd already bought five books so i only had two more prompts to go and one of them was weighing on me pretty heavily because i had been looking in every shop for a book that had have in the title so i headed on over to toppings because i know they've got a large selection and I was very lucky to find this book, which is What Have We Done by Alex Finley. Now, I don't think I've read from Alex Finley before, but they are the author of Every Last Fit and The Night Shift, which I've definitely seen around. But it's a thriller, and I've clearly been in some kind of mood with these options. Like, all of them so far have been thriller, mystery, dark vibes, kind of. So another one on the list. This one is about the foster children of Savior House, who never knew the peace of a normal childhood. Raised in an institution, a group of three friends from the home have now grown and gone their separate ways. They haven't seen one another since they left those abusive halls until 25 years later when they are reunited for a single inescapable reason someone is trying to kill them. To save their lives the group will have to revisit the nightmares of their childhoods and confront their past, a past that holds the key to everything. So kids raised in an institution now being killed off one by one. Sounds like it's gonna be up my street as well so I cannot believe I found something that had have in the title. I was absolutely buzzing. But I was left with one prompt and this was a bit of a trickier one because whilst in the other bookshops, I was also keeping an eye out for, you know, the little staff recommended cards that are in front of the books. Um, but every single card I saw in Waterstones was for a book I'd already read, particularly in the fantasy and sci-fi section. So there was, they were like recommending like The Final Empire and Jade City and Malice, many of us that I'd already read and enjoyed. And then in the, kind of just general fiction section none of the books that people were recommending were really taking my fancy I feel like there was a lot of short story collections that the staff in that in Waterstones were recommending and I didn't see any of these staff recommended kind of things in Blackwells either or armchair books but I thought surely toppings will have these and surely toppings will be my savior however no <laughs> they had none of those staff recommended little cards saying specifically why that staff member recommends the book but they did have a wall where it said staff recommended books. They gave me no reasons as to why these had been recommended, but I did see this one on that wall and it's The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. And I know this book did really well. I know it's really popular. I think it might have even been like a Reese Witherspoon book club pick at one point. I've heard really good things, so I thought, hey, here's my reason and my opportunity to pick this one up. And it's about 18 year old Donis, who has always felt like an outsider with her mixed heritage, both in her hometown and on the nearby Oh, is it Ojibwe reservation? I'll probably audio book this one and then I'll know the pronunciation properly. Uh, but when she witnesses a murder, Donis reluctantly agrees to go undercover, but secretly she pursues her own investigation, tracking down the culprits with her knowledge of traditional medicine. That's fun, that's cool. As the bodies pile up, Donis finds herself caught in a web of deceit that threatens the people she loves the most. So, murder mystery, kind of, also. Do all of the books I've picked have murder in them? Possibly, <laughs> maybe. I mean, not this one. 
don't think. <laughs> but that was the last book I picked up. Now, let me try and tell you what's working for each prompt here. So, the first prompt I got was the random number generator, which I've already discussed is Daphne by Josh Malaman. Now the random letter generator, I was trying to pick books that had authors' names with C's in them. So we have Camilla Bruce here for The Witch in the Well and also Agatha Christie, but I'm going with Christie for this prompt and specifically The Body in the Library. I don't think I've read a Miss Marple book yet? Possibly not. So it might be my first Marple, which is exciting. The next prompt we had was the random word generator, which was have. So this one. Very pleased about that. Cover by, I am choosing Grady Hendrix for this one because I don't think it really works for any other prompts. And also this was definitely a cover by, in particular, the naked cover because I just think it's really cool. <laughs> so that's that one. Um, the next prompt was partner pick, as we've discussed, Massey chose correctly. We also had staff pick, which I just mentioned was the Firekeeper's Daughter. And then the other prompt that we had was new release. So the one I'm left with, it's The Witch in the Well, which I thought was a new release. Actually, I'm gonna double check on Goodreads when this was released. Like, how recent does something have to be to class it as a new release? <laughs> oh, crap. No, this isn't a new release. It's not even from this year. It's September 2022. Huh. So that one, I didn't... I can't really count this as a new release, can I? I really thought it was, though. <laughs> my concept of time has been really messed up, though, this year. In my brain, it's still March. Cannot believe it's actually June. But anyway, what do I do? <laughs> do I buy another new release? I've actually had a look at the new releases on Goodreads for June, and there's nothing really that's, like, calling to me. Um, however, this doesn't really count as part of the, like, book haul, because I didn't go out and buy this, like, myself in a bookshop in Edinburgh, but I could always read The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer, because this one sounds really good. Or, actually, there is a book that I've been really wanting to read, but I haven't bought it because... I'm gonna be getting the fairy loot edition, but I do have it saved on script and that's Fourth Wing, which everyone seems to be reading at the moment. It's very hyped. I do not know if I'm gonna like it or not. I'm kind of a bit hesitant to try it because I've seen a couple of reviews that weren't good, but then I've seen so many five-star reviews. So I could read Fourth Wing and count that as part of this haul, even though I'm technically not purchasing it right now because I'm gonna be getting the fairy loot edition down the road. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Actually, sound off in the comments. As part of this like reading vlog I'm gonna be doing where I read these seven books, should I also read The Wishing Game? Or should I read Fourth Wing as part of that? And that can count as a new release. I'll still read The Witch in the Well, even though it's technically not a new release. So I will be reading eight books in the reading vlog for this. But yeah, this one or Fourth Wing? Y'all let me know. <laughs> but as always, please do let me know your thoughts on these books if you've read them. Let me know if you're tempted to try them too. I hope you like these kind of videos. I really enjoy making them. It's like a wee scavenger hunt around the bookshops, which is always fun. It does stress me out a little bit when I'm really struggling with the prompt, but then sometimes things apparently work out well for me. So <laughs> I'm calling this one a success, even if I didn't quite get a new release. But do keep your eye out for the reading vlog, which will be coming sometime in June, depending on how quickly I can get through these. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me as always. Also a huge thanks to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video, supporting the channel and enabling me. <laughs> as I mentioned, you can check out Book of the Month down in the description. And thank you so much again for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you want to do that. My other social stuff is down below too and I shall catch you in the next one, my dudes. Bye y'all!